Good morning everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up. Well, it's time to unbox these tomatoes now. So that's the boxes off, time to get some supports up from now and I'm running on canes this year. Right, to tie these up, I'm using cable ties. Um, I've used these for a couple of years now. I made an inquiry with, the, with our um, local waste recycling people and I was told as long as you use a coloured um, cable tie, it can be recycled, it will go through the process. So I'm taking it for granted that coloured is anything apart from black or white. This year I'm using green, last year I used yellow and blue. And I'll save them all up until I've got a big bag full of the discarded ones after the season and then cable tie them together and recycle them after a couple of years.
Right, tomatoes, and these are what they call indeterminate tomatoes, means they just grow straight up in a cordon and you train them straight up. Uh, I won't confuse you with the bush type, but this is what the majority of people grow. Anyway, here's the tomato stem, now I'm hoping you can see this. Always, for the side shoots, to take them out, always follow the stem up and hold on to the stem. You'll see a leaf to one side and between the stem and the leaf is your side shoot and you just pull it out like that. That's a mini me tomato plant. Just shove it in the soil and it'll grow, hopefully. So again, following your stem up, you come to a leaf joint here. I'll turn it around so you can see it. Here's your leaf. Here's the stem. Here's the leaf. There's your side shoot. And again, stem, stem, leaf, side shoot. Take it out. And you do this all the way up. Holding to the stem with my left hand, leaf, side shoot. Now, when it gets and looks a little bit like this, it can look a bit confusing because the side shoot is nearly as thick as the stem itself. So again, this is where this method pays. Hold on to the stem of the plant where you know that it is stem. Find your leaf, which is this part. That's your side shoot. So just break it out. Very gently take it off. Now, you'll get a side shoot in here and you'll see one starting there. Leave them, leave them alone. A couple of reasons for this. One is, you're at the top of the plant, it's at its most fragile part. If you try to snap a side sheet out, you might actually take the top of the plant out. You might also make a mistake and take the wrong side sheet out and take the top of the plant off. And later on, if the top of your plant dies, you can actually grow a side sheet on as to carry your plant growing. So always leave the top 12 inches until it's grown past that point and then you can take them out. So that's now ready to tie into these new canes I've just put up, so that's, that's ready. Another thing with um, caning your plants up and getting them sorted, tying your plants to your canes. Um, this is the accepted practice. What you do is you loop your string around the cane and then you'll twist that a couple of times before you tie that up. You tie it fairly loose so that the plant's got room to move but that holds your plant as it grows up. But as you can see this part on the cane is loose. So this is no good for tying up things such as cucumbers if you're trying to train them upwards or, or pumpkins or squashes summer squashes. So what I do, and this is a tip I got from my dad who used to have an allotment. We can find that other piece of string. Is I'll loop the string around but I'll also loop it round the cane one more time and then I will twist it. That twist forms the barrier between the plant and the cane to stop them chafing and then wrap it around the stem of the plant and tie it. Now what you've got now is that doesn't slip when you've got the weight of the plant on it and that helps to hold it. So that's the method I use twice around the cane and then twist it round itself and round the plant. Two nights ago I think we had our last frost of this end of spring if you like coming into summer that should be our last frost i've looked ahead for the next two weeks and the temperatures are favorable so i've removed the boxes today came these up and got them ready for summer growing really now on the subject of temperatures i could have taken these boxes off yesterday there was no frost last night but the temperatures were predicted to be down at five degrees that's no good for tomatoes they need a 10 degree minimum day and night to grow and flourish well so this is why I've had the boxes on and why I've took them off today because tonight it's forecast I think at 9 degrees overnight 
and inside the polytunnel they'll be fine and they'll be okay and, and continue to grow. Now I know many people start the tomatoes off very early in the year sometimes in February in propagators and they get all excited I do the same myself but you've got to be able to protect your plants when they come out of that environment it's no good putting them outside into your garden or into a cold frame or a cold greenhouse or polytunnel because you're just going to check the plants unless you have that over 90, 10 degrees and that's not good for the plants you're stopping starting them like this you just want a nice gentle growth all the time it's better for the plants better for the plants health and its overall production shall we say through the season so it's just a little hint on temperature so that you can plan for it for next year what you're going to do with those early grow, early sown and grown tomatoes when they come out of the propagators where are you going to put them and can you maintain that 10 degrees can you give them the protection that they need and it's the same for your peppers and your melons and your cucumbers uh, your chilies they all need that constant temperature if they're duck, ducking and diving all the time it's not good for the plants um, so there you go tomatoes 10 degrees overnight temperatures all the time there we go another day at the allotment done tomatoes all sorted out ready for growing now through the summer i hope you enjoyed the tips in today's program there's a lot of tips there that i learned over a number of years and after making quite a few mistakes myself um, and and that's the way you learn but in this case i've put it all into a little video for you so that you can learn it a little easier and quicker um, if you like what you see today and if you haven't already subscribed then please do um, hit the subscribe button and as you do so the little notification pop-up will come along select all and that way next time I post a video you won't miss the content and um, there's a little graphic just appearing just down here now that will show you how to do it even if you need to do that but there we go um, I hope everybody's keeping well and staying safe and please continue to do so and i'll see you on the next one probably tomorrow and th and that's it for today so thanks very much for watching and i'll see you again soon take care